seriously, real life Patterson, we need to talk about this thing that you've done to us because it's, it's no, just no, it's fine, fine. Let's talk about crazy stuff like this ridiculous hairdo that real life Patterson has forced on us. Today, we will discuss non-standard heredity. These are non-Mendelian traits, so these are all the ones that Gregor Mendel, with his peas, didn't know about because he was a monk way back in the back, back, back days, and uh, this stuff's a little bit trickier. So, before we get there, let's uh, have a little refresher about our Mendelian. So, there's two main patterns for inheritance for all normal traits. That would be... Uh, Yes, dominant. And if there is dominant, then there is probably also recessive. Yes, recessive. All traits inherited this way are called blanketal traits. They are called Mendelian, but because they're on normal chromosomes, they're also called autosomal traits, self-body traits, autosomal traits. Additionally, there are blank important blank patterns of inheritance we need to address. There are three, three blank patterns of inheritance we need to address. Yes, non-standard, you could also say non-Mendelian. So there's three non-Mendelian, three non-standard patterns of inheritance that also need to be addressed. Children, traits are controlled by two blank dominant alleles. That's right, not just one. These traits, they're especially weird. Traits that are controlled by two separate, I know that was a weird, separate dominant alleles. Those are called co-dominant, co-dominant, like co-captains. A good example here, uh, blood type, also blank, 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 which is a potentially fatal condition. Sickle cell anemia, where your blood gets all weird, and then you feel tired. Sickle cell anemia. Here are some pictures that real life Patterson will go through with you. Here's how to spell sickle cell anemia again, because I know some of you guys just freaked out a little bit. There it is, sickle cell anemia. Blue screen. Regular screen. Next type. Blank traits are controlled by blank, blank alleles. Notice it says alleles, so these are going to be polygenic. Yeah, polygenic. Meaning uh, many genes. So they're controlled by blank, blank alleles. Several different alleles. Several different alleles. Polygenic. Many different alleles. One example is blank in wheat plants. That's right, color in wheat plants. And really, other than the, uh, the purple and uh, white flowers and green and yellow pods and peas, color in almost all living things is a polygenic trait. Uh, any trait where you have a wide variety of phenotypes is going to be polygenic because you've got all these different alleles controlling it, giving you a variety of different phenotypes that could be expressed. Another good one is blank in humans. Height. Height in humans. There's around uh, 600-ish plus genes that control how tall you are, which is why you have people ranging from like shack level to, uh, you know, the opposite of shack level. Kind of. So in order to predict the blank of these traits, in order to predict the outcome of these traits, we need more than just our normal blank blank. So we need more than just our Punnett square with a capital P, because that's named after some guy named Punnett. And two N's, and two T's, even though spell check will always say it's wrong. We need to do what Mr. Jarosz teaches. We need statistical calculations. That's another type. So we've got co-dominant, we've got statistical calculations for our polygenic traits. Third type has to do with the picture there. So in our body we have 23 pairs of, that's right, chromosomes. 
It's 23 pairs of chromosomes. Therefore, we have a total of 46. Very good. That's math. And last pair is the blank blank. They look like an X and a Y. Yep, that'd be the sex chromosomes. That's the last pair. So remember, we put them in order by height or in size. The biggest is first. The last one there, there's the sex chromosomes. And as you can see, they clearly look like an X and a Y. Right. Yeah, I know, but, well, they're chromatids, so you have to, they're going to be doubled, you know, and, uh, you, you, come on, just, just raise the thing and write it on the board for them, real life Patterson, so they can see it, huh? God, this hair, and now this thing's up really high, let's get up, doesn't even care about learning anymore. Traits carried on the 23rd pair of chromosomes, traits carried on the 23rd pair of chromosomes, they are linked to that set, so they're called... Sex linked. Eh. Eh. Sex linked. They're called sex linked. As with blank traits, these are the quote normal traits. As with autosomal traits, these can either be blank or blank, just like in the first paragraph. Yes, they can be dominant, and they can also be. <laughs> Forms of the alleles. They can either be found on the X or the Y chromosome. Here's a picture of your X chromatid. You can see all the different traits that could potentially be on there. This is just showing the genetic disorders. Because why show all the normal developmental things? We can just show that. And then uh, pretty much on the Y chromosome, you've got uh, being a boy. That's the only thing on the Y chromosome. Those on the Y affect blanks only. Yes, it's on the Y. It's going to affect males only, men only, because men are traditionally X, Y. And for those on the X chromosome, males need only how many copies to be affected? You have just the one. Why, you ask? Because men are X, Y. Questions? Ask that guy with his weird hair, and I'm going to go shave my head or something. Thanks.